So welcome everybody. Welcome to welcome to a new human experience podcast. And um, today is the 21st of April, 2022. The topic for this evening is the state of wealth. And um, I just want to mention that I kind of base this what I'm going to talk about to explore um, and to share this evening, I based it on video number three in the wealth series that Jason Estes is, has been um, sharing on his YouTube channel, which is MTVO Team. And this number three, the, the topic for his video was richness versus wealth. And I'm actually, what struck me most after I, I went through the whole video was just this one thing that he mentioned, maybe in around the middle of the, the, his video, he mentioned that wealth is a state of awareness that translates into all matters. And this really landed on me very profoundly because as I look back on my own childhood and looking at how my my parents and the, the grown-ups around me how their frame of mind um, were and are about wealth is that I kind of never observed or it never dawned on me that they um they have a healthy, wealthy state of mind at all. I, for me, when I think of my mother's um, state in terms of wellness, not just I'm not just talking about money, not just talking about the monetary part of it, is that with everything else, she does not come across to me as someone who really has um, a state of mind that is wealth aware at all. So, so when I thought about this, I was, it actually, um, it affected me in that even looking back on myself is my own state of awareness as well is it took me a long time um i would say until rather recently that i was able to start to catch a glimpse of what wealth as a state of, of awareness actually may look like because i remember even when I was working in corporate um, and I was making good money, even when I was making you know, six figure money, um, annual salary of that, I still didn't have this wealth as a state of awareness. It was, I remember when I was making six figures, um, it was like my, my state of, in terms of financial, and, and personal wellness is, I actually felt undeserved that I don't deserve the amount of money that I'm getting, that I was getting. So I, I really felt somehow I have to try harder and harder than usual to, to kind of make sure that I, um, to try to live up to my, the, 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 the amount of people the, the amount of money that people are, are paying me and um, that persisted for for like a long time I mean not that I was earning six-figure income for a long time but but that no matter what amount of money I was earning whether I was earning little or whether I was earning a lot that I really have no concept of wealth as a state of mind at all. There was always this backdrop of worrying, worrying. And when I'm not worrying, even when I was making good money, I really didn't know how to 
I would say, be stable within and to feel good and to feel calm and, and um, stable within for the longest of time. And, um, I <clears throat> and I remember the first time things started to switch around was when I very consistently in the last couple of years that whenever I got to the point where I don't know when uh, when money is going to come in again I don't know how I'm going to take care of myself and then it's without fail always something will show up always I would be taken care of and my guides have been um, talking to me and letting me know that you will always be taken care of but I never believe them I think until maybe a year ago like after they have consistently surprised me by all of these things that that <clears throat> money would show up and um, people would give me money um, sometimes uh, I anticipated that sometimes I totally did not even even know that it is possible for that source of income to come in so it is I think around like after it's showed up very consistently and my guides have been repeatedly telling me that you will always be taken care of there was that's exact I, about a year ago I finally got to the point where I just okay I give up um, worrying so if you think if you you, you guys keep telling me and it keeps turning out to be that way then I'm going to I, it, I made a switch in my mind that whenever I go into the worry mode again I would just say no I'm done with that um, because worrying really never made any difference whereas expecting to be taken care of actually feels much better in my energy field and so and when I when I heard that um, Jason mentioned that wealth is a state of awareness that translates into all matters that landed and it actually I agree that that is really the case not because he said it but because I've actually experienced that myself, is that this, this, this state of awareness that actually I, I am the one that's creating whatever it is that's showing up in my world. So that's why I can, I can make sure, that's why I, I can feel comfortable that I would always be taken care of because I am the one that's actually creating these opportunities these um, lines of finance and also other ways of, uh, of this. so it's not just money it, it is the um, all of the four primary resources which is Part of it is money. Part of it is actually our life force. So all of those things. And, and I know that every now and then my like I would get healings from my guides, from other entities, other beings as working with me is whenever I feel like my body is not doing so well, I would, I would get a healing from them. So, so I've always been taken care of and it has been like that. And so in failing that, I just want to mention that we actually, that's the way the universe works, is that when we are stable, when our sense of self, when we have a vision of how we want to live and what we want to have in our life when we 
And when we actually feel that, and we actually take consistent action that will take us closer and closer to our own vision, then the universe will provide the opportunities, the, the connections, the people will show up that will start to give you what it is, or at least give you to the next step, get you to the next step so that you can get one step closer to what it is that you have envisioned for yourself. So now let's backtrack a little bit um, to talk about what is wealth first, because Kenneth have been throwing this word around and um, the, the definition of wealth is the ability to flow through life with all the resources available, that all the resources that we need to be available to us when we need it. So that is what wealth is. And with, with this definition of wealth, wealth is not about you know, living in the biggest mansion in, you know, in seaside um, mansions or penthouses. For, for some people that may be, but not everybody wants to live like that. So wealth is, is really just the ability to flow through life with all everything that we need being available to us when we need it. And I did mention that is everything that we need, not necessarily everything that we want. So we have to kind of have um, a little talk about need versus want, because I always get this. I always get this um, kind of mixed up because for me, you know, um, having certain things in my life is for me a need. However, if I really think about it, it's actually no, it's not really a need. It's a want, but it's a want that, that I haven't really looked at too much and so it 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 has gotten fussy so need need is i have a roof over my head i have food on a table that is neat want is hey i want sushi for let's say um, easter dinner so that is more of a luxury um what i suffer much if I don't have that, if I just have uh, um, like a vegetable stew for, for Easter dinner, would that be so bad? No, absolutely not. So it is really need versus want. And for the longest time, I thought, okay, taking courses, that is a need. I need to take courses, but I don't have to take every course. I don't have to take all the, the courses that I want to take, whether even though it could be you know, Sifu James courses, or it could be someone else's energy courses. Just because I feel the need that, oh, I need to take some courses. But that does not really mean that it's a need. It may be just a want. I just feel that um, that I want to take some of the, the courses. However, there are certain courses that falls under need. So um, what, it, what is need versus what is want is not, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, the same thing could be a need, it could be a want. For example, if I, um, if I am an, an, like a, a, mas, a masseuse, for example, then I need to have a strong body myself. So let's say membership to the gym or having somebody to give me at least one massage um, a month may be a need, but I don't need to have 
four massages a month or I don't need to have two massages every week. So it's, it's really something that you need to, everybody need to really look inside is need versus want. And why do we need to look at that? And that's because to have some kind of structure in our lives is one of the ways that we can start to stabilize ourselves. I did mention that when we are stable as who we are and we know what it is our vision is, then the universe will start to provide the opportunities for you to meet the the right persons, to make the right connections and opportunities being introduced to you when you're stable. Whereas when we um, are not stable, which is if I don't have any idea what I want to do this week, um, should I go out and see two movies or should I, what should I do this week? And if I don't have a vision, of where I want to take my life and I don't have a a structure that will take me step by step there. For example, if I want to, let's say open a um, a center for energy healing, for example, uh, an energy healing school, if that's something that I would like to have, then I, I, the structure would be to have a business, kind of get a business plan together and then get the finance. So then having the discipline to, to really nail down what a, a um, business plan is and also to kind of budget out how much investment I need to have or put aside in order for me to to take steps to make this dream, this this vision of mine to have to open this energy healing school to come true. That is that is the structure. And so one of the structure that was introduced in Jason's um, video is the structure of 60 40. So he introduced it as um, in terms of how much you make, let's say how much you make, how much you bring in each month is the 100%. So 60-40 is that 60% of your monthly income should be going to, uh, should be able to cover all your living expenses and so that is and then the other 40 percent he suggested that the 20 percent is to go to repaying debt if you have any debt and if you don't then have that 20 percent be going into investment and then 10 percent would be discretionary so it could be whether you want to put that money aside or you want to um give it and donate it to to charities that is really dear to your heart and then 10 percent is for fun so he gave the example in in terms of finance however the 6040 will also applies to all of your other primary resource as well. So your so you should really reserve for your own health and well-being 60% of your life force. And then some of the, the 20% would be you know going to repay somebody else who have helped you out. So it could be a 
I wouldn't really call it that. Let's say some somebody help you move. Then when they needed some help to move things, then that will be you using your life force to help them out. And then 10% of your life force would be for fun to do things that really bring you joy, like go walk in the park. For me, just um, being close to water and um, it could be going to the movies. And then 10% is discretionary. So when you really live by that structure of 60, 40, it, it helps you to stabilize yourself because you would be able to live within your own means. And when you have this, this discipline, it actually assists you into being able to um, portion out your own resources in a way that is going to, to support you. So when I, uh, let's say if I want to really have that energy healing school, then I would be putting away at least 20 to maybe even 30% of the money that I make into some investment that is going to grow and in a way have the, the so the, to allow me to have the, 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 the money necessary to pay for renting an office or um, doing F, uh, advertisements and all those things to grow the business. So, but if I don't have a structure for myself, then especially for me, because I'm more of a um, flowing kind of person. I don't have a lot of structure in my life. And, and so the 60-40 really it works for me. So it's something that really speaks to me. And I also want to introduce the concept of what debt is and what investment is. So debt is really borrowing from your future to have something in this moment. So, so when, you, when, you, when you start to incur debt, and I remember at one point, I did actually rack up a fair amount of credit card debt, and it actually got out of hand um, in that, and I really did not enjoy that. The journey of getting myself back into being much more responsible for my own finance and into now that I actually don't have a credit card, everything it is, I would either have the money to pay for it or I just don't um, spend the money on it. So when I really have that discipline and not to, not to rely on incurring more debt in order to pay for what it is that I, I like, because I have that tendency to blur the lines between what is what and what, what is need. So I need new clothes. No, I don't. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's for me, for myself, that discipline to live within this 60-40 rule. And that actually makes a lot of sense to me and it actually helps me. And I'm, I'm really glad that it's not just all about rule, rule, rule. Within the 60-40, there is enough of a, there's at least 10% that is discretionary and also 10% on fun. So, and 20% um, goes to paying down the debt because when we borrow 
from the future to have something now for whatever reason, um, it actually anchors us in the past because we're still paying for the debt. So we are still paying for and uh, something that we, for whatever reason, we have to incur that, that debt for. And when we get disciplined to pay down the debt with whatever we have, like 20% of what we have, that actually would give us more um, of a discipline, a plan to pay down the debt, to get to the point where we are no longer anchored in the past. Like there may be very valid reason that you go into debt. However, any debt, if you don't have a, a plan, um, a structure for you to pay down the debt, it weighs on you. It weighs on you energetically and it actually weighs on you. It, it takes away your health because you're worrying about, oh, okay, so... Um, that that debt is still there. It's kind of tied around you, and it starts to your your life force is kind of leaching out because of that. Now, what is investment? Investment is giving something. So, investing something right now that is going to pay you back in the future. That is what a an investment is so when you even when you're in debt it's still you need to invest a certain amount of your income towards investment so when you're still in debt yes pay down the 20 percent but within that 10 percent that you still have for discretionary. Make sure that between three to 7% of your discretionary, and, um, the portions, discretionary portion of your income that you invest in something that really you believe in, and that holds um, a, that, that really for you is something that is going to potentially pay you back in the future, something that you actually believe in. And whatever that means is something that is up to you to do the research and find out. But when you start to think about investing three to 7%, you are actually starting to energetically offset the debt because the debt is weighing on you, you are actually borrowing from your future. And when you start to invest a bit on your investment, you are investing something that's going to pay you in the future. So it kind of starting to um, fill the gap of the debt, the debt that you have incurred. So that is the the benefit of investments. So I've covered what debt and investment actually do to us um, energetically. And now I actually want to mention something about um, wealth, wealth versus richness. So wealth is our ability to flow through life with all the resources that we need being available when we need it. So that is wealth, which is defined as something that is um, a windfall, more of um, rich is a temporary opportunity to acquire, get more resources, whether that resources is money or something else that is one of the four primary resources. So um, it could be that, you know, the, a windfall in terms of money could be, let's say you winning a, um, 
the lottery or maybe you made an investment and all of a sudden it just tripled in value overnight. So that could be a, a considered a windfall. Or maybe you got to know somebody who is actually um, an expert energy healer and, and he's he or she is very willing to share with you what it is, how to how you too can improve your ability to heal other people. So that is a an uh, an, an example of a temporary opportunity to acquire more resources. So when you are stable because you have structure to support yourself financially and energetically when you, and you also have a vision of what it, how it is that you want your life to look and some structure to assist you in getting there so when you are stable as who you are then these things like windfalls can start to come in and when there is an opportunity and to, to acquire more resources when these windfalls come in. Because you have a structure, you would be able to take advantage of these. You won't just um, be like somebody who, if um, example is somebody who um, win the lottery, if they don't, if they are not stable and they don't have the, the wealth mentality, and for them, they've always been living from paycheck to paycheck and always you know, have to borrow and get in debt. And all of a sudden they have this big chunk of money. They don't know how to hang on to it. So energetically though, you would, when your state of mind does not have a stable wealth mentality, being um, like into it, then actually your you most likely want to do is to actually spend the money as quickly as you get it. That is that is what happens when you don't have state of mind of wealth. So because all of a sudden you have this big chunk of windfall, you don't know how to take advantage of this so you're energetically you're uncomfortable okay I all of a sudden I have a hundred thousand extra in my month in my in my bank account what am I going to do I'm going to oh go in and, and buy things because this all of a sudden this change is kind of making you anxious. And so you would somehow find ways to get rid of it so that you would get back to the amount of money in your bank account that you are familiar with and you're comfortable with. So that is if you have not actually grown your own state of mind to have the wealth mentality in it and also there is the case of um, when you're trying to pay down your debt too fast because all of a sudden you want to pay down your your debt and you if you haven't quite learned the lessons of why you got into debt in the first place if you got into debt because you want to um, be seen as living a lifestyle that is beyond your own means, then and you haven't quite learned that lesson yet. What happens is when you get a windfall, you you would actually spend that money so fast that you um, even if you pay use that amount of money to pay it off your debt the thing is when you have not learned the lesson 
it will take you no time at all to all of a sudden get yourself back into about the same um, amount of debt as before you had that windfall because you haven't learned the lesson yet. So these are all things that can happen when you don't have a structure that will assist you in growing your own uh, mindset, your own wealth, state of mind. So one more thing I just want to cover is 10% is for fun. And it's this 10% is actually very important because life is not all about, you know, just making, just putting a roof over your head and food on the table and paying off debt. Life is also about having fun as well. When you really honor this idea that fun has to be a part of your life. And even when you are in debt, you still manage to budget yourself to have 10% of fun, to give yourself some fun. It will assist you in feeling that life is not all about chores, not all about um, being responsible and quote unquote. It's, life is actually enjoyable, it's supposed to be enjoyable. And even when you are in debt, you can find ways to make working and paying off your debt something that is fun to do as well. And no, and especially when you actually have a structure for yourself to spend some part of your money to on something that is fun for you. It actually assists yourself in getting back to this idea that life is enjoyable as well. Whereas if you only um, march along your life as, as a very um, goal-oriented person, no fun, have to work, 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 then what's the point of living? So let me see, have that covered everything? Um, yeah, it seems like. Oh, one more thing I just want to cover is um, this, this applies to me at one point because one of the questions that I have in my mind is, well, you know, 60-40 rule is fine. However, what happens if I have no income at all? So what am I going to do? 60-40 of zero is still zero. So that does not compute. So what was suggested is that, yes, you may not have an income. Your income may be zero or maybe even less than zero, but you, it's not just about, it's not just about money. It's, it's about all your resources as well. So you, it's, you can't have zero for all of your resources because otherwise you would be, you, you can't be very healthy. Because, um, for example, life force, if you're lacking in life force, all you have to do is go exercise and you would generate more life force for yourself. So what to do when you have no, when your income is zero, you're unemployed for a period of time. So what do you need to do? So invest in yourself. If you have no income, then it's really prime time to invest in yourself. So at first, invest in yourself in something that is that does not cost money. For example, meditating. Really set, um, set out 
a part of your day, um, let's say, whatever part of your day is, maybe 20% of your day, maybe 10% of your day. So that part of your day is to invest in yourself, to meditate and to connect with who you are, yourself, your true self, not the, the self that um, you as your personality, but yourself as your true self. When you spend the time to really quiet down and listen to yourself, you will start to connect with what really is important to you and start to have that vision, have a vision of what you want to have in your life, what you want to experience in your life. And when you start to connect with who you are and have start to build that vision for yourself, even when you have no money to, in, to really make that vision come true. However, at least you find your own direction, knowing the direction that you truly want to move towards is really um, a big part of this journey of having a structure in your life to stabilize your own life is you're no longer um, you know lo you're no longer directionless you at least have a vision of where you want to see yourself in a couple of months time or a year or two so invest time to meditate connect with who you are and what it is that you want in your life and when you start to become connecting to yourself and start to stabilize then the universe can start to bring in opportunities for you to take the next step and the next step and if and this is an energetic universe. When you start to connect with a vision and also not just connect with a vision, but also um, start to let go of the, the self-talk that is keeping you away from your own vision, then you would start to be able to see it in front of you and opportunities will start to come about. I've seen it myself, I have experienced that in myself, is that we truly are the creator within our own lives. When you start to become more stable, internal state of wealth within yourself, the, the wealth as a, as a state of awareness, when you start to cultivate that from a state of knowing who you are and what it is that is going to bring joy to you, that is going to align with your own values, then that will start to translate. The universe will start to bring about and conspire to and bend over backwards to meet you halfway so that is what i want to talk about this evening <laughs>